summer meets Mundo Monday. All summer long, we have learned how people all over the world have told magical tales to help everyone to imagine their story. Stories are so important that some of the heroes of stories are storytellers themselves. At the beginning of the summer, we met Anansi, the Spider-Man and weaver of stories. More recently, we met Seth the Dreamer, who is not a fool after all. But today we will meet a storyteller who wove never-ending tales, as if her life depended on it, which it did. This is the story, or stories, of Shahrazad, or as she is more commonly known in America, Shahrazad, possibly the greatest storyteller in all of folklore. To tell her story to you today, we are using two different collections of Tales of the Arabian Nights. One as told by Donna Joan Napoli, who also told our Tales of Norse mythology the other week in 2016. The other as told by Andrew Lang in 1898. The story and stories go even farther back in time than those, at least as far back as the 7th century, when the Sassanid Empire ruled Persia. Persia is centered around what is today known as Iran. Arabia officially refers to this peninsula in the Middle East, but the stories of 1001 Arabian Nights take place all across Persia most of southwestern Asia, as far west as Egypt and Greece, and as far east as China. In fact, the story of Scheherazade herself takes place somewhere in what is today known as Pakistan, but was simply part of the Persian Empire when this story takes place. A word of warning to the squeamish, these stories do get violent. But the good guys win in the end. In this story, a great sultan, Shah Rayar, ruled this empire. For many years, he was a good leader, until jealousy led him to become unspeakably cruel. You see, his wife fell in love with a serving man, and Shah Rayar had a broken heart. But he was the sultan, upholder of rules, he could have anyone executed for breaking the rules. So he had his wife and her new boyfriend killed. It gets worse, much worse. Shah Rayar was not satisfied. You see, he wanted a new wife, but he didn't trust anyone not to treat him the way his old wife had. So when he married again, he spent one night with his new wife, but then had her killed the next morning before she could do anything wrong, he said. Then he took yet another wife, but had her killed the next morning too. It became a habit. Every day, Shah Rayar would marry someone new, and the very next morning, he would have her killed. Now, the people of Persia hated Shah Rayar. Everyone was afraid he would decide to marry them or someone they love, only to have her killed the next day. It became the duty of his highest advisor, the Grand Vizier, to find a new young woman to be the Sultan's doomed wife each and every day. It was a miserable task, taking another frightened bride from her devastated family each day. But if the vizier refused, Shahreya would have him killed too. The grand vizier had two daughters of his own. The oldest, Shahrazad, was very smart, very kind, and very, very brave. One day she told the vizier, Father, take me to be the sultan's bride today. I will stop him from all this killing or die trying. The vizier was horrified and begged her to change her mind. But Shahrazad was determined. 
So old Shah Rayyar married Shahrazad, but Shahrazad had a plan. She asked her little sister, Dinarzad, to come with them to their bedroom that night. Shah Rayyar was confused why Dinarzad was following them, but Shahrazad begged him, Oh, please, she is my dear sister, and this is the last she will see me. So Dinarzad stayed with her sister and the Sultan, and late at night, just as Shahrazad had told her to, she asked, Shahrazad, will you please tell me one of your fabulous stories like you used to? One last time? Will you allow this? Shahrazad asked the Sultan. It is her last chance to hear my stories. So Shah Rayar agreed, and Shahrazad told this story. This is the tale of the merchant and the genie. Once there was a merchant who had to travel long distances to buy and sell his merchandise. On the way home, he stopped to rest by a cool spring and ate some dates for a snack. He tossed the pits carelessly this way and that. Suddenly, in front of him, an enormous genie arose, waving a huge sword. Stand up and let me kill you as you have killed my son, the genie said. The merchant was very frightened, but he said, Please, sir, how can I have killed your son? I've never even met him. Do you deny that you have sat here eating dates and throwing the pits about? Well, no, I have been, but... Then you have killed my son. He was walking by and one of your date pits hit him in the eye and killed him. So now you must die. The merchant begged for mercy. He flattered the genie with poetry and he offered the genie money and treasures. The genie would not relent. Finally, the merchant pleaded, if you just allow me to go home for a little while, to say goodbye to my family and put my affairs in order. I give you my word that I'll return to this very spot on the first day of the new year, and then you can kill me. This the genie allowed. So the merchant continued home and broke the news to his family, who wailed with despair, but they made the most of their last months together. And the wealthy merchant put his affairs in order, not only making sure his children had plenty to live on, but paying off all his debts and giving the remaining money to the poor. Thus prepared, he returned to the spring where he'd met the genie, as promised, on New Year's Day. He waited. While he waited, an old sheik walked by, leading a gazelle. The old sheik said, Young man, why are you sitting here? Don't you know this area is inhabited by a wicked jinn? I do, said the merchant. That is why I'm here. And he told the old man his whole story. The old sheik was astonished at the merchant's bravery and honesty at coming back. He decided to wait with him to see what would happen next. So they both waited. While they waited, another sheep walked by, this one with two big black dogs. He too wanted to know why they sat there, so the first old sheep told him the story. The sheep with the big black dogs was likewise amazed and decided to join them. As they were talking, a third sheep passed by and asked to know what was happening. He too decided to wait and see what would happen when the genie arrived. Soon, the ground shook great cloud of dust rolled toward them. The dust cleared, and there above them stood the great genie, sword in hand. All four men and the two dogs and the one gazelle trembled and cried in fear, but the genie just pointed his sword and said, Stand up and let me kill you as you have killed my son. But it is very late, and I cannot possibly go on with the story tonight. Shah Rayar said, what? But what happened to the merchant? Will the genie really put him to death, even though it wasn't his fault? Because who would do a thing like that? Dinarzad said, 
Will you tell us the rest of the story tomorrow night? And Shahrazad said, Well, that's up to the Sultan if he'd let me live another day. Well, Shahrazad really wanted to find out if the merchant lived, so he let Shahrazad live that day too. What harm could one more day do? So that night, Shahrazad continued the tale. So the genie pointed his sword at the merchant. The merchant wept with fear. But then the first old sheik knelt before the genie and said quickly, Oh, great king of jinn, I have a tale to tell. If my tale is more fabulous than the tale of this merchant, will you grant me one third of your right to this merchant's life? The genie agreed. So the old sheik began to tell his story. Yes, Shahrazad just started a new story inside the first story. The old sheik gestured to the gazelle beside him and said, This is my wife. She was a woman once. You see, we had no children, so I took a second wife, and the two of us had a son. But my first wife was consumed with jealousy, and so she began to learn magic to get revenge. While I was away on a long journey, she used her magic to turn my second wife into a cow, and my son into a bull calf. When I came home, she told me that the other wife had died and my son had run away. I knew no differently until Eid al Hada, when it was time to sacrifice a cow for the feast. My steward brought a cow who knew so piteously I could not bear to sacrifice her. She was, in fact, my second wife, though I did not know. But this is why when I tried to ask the steward to bring a different cow instead, my first wife protested, No, no, only this cow will do. I finally asked the steward to butcher the cow. And you know, that cow that looked so fat turned out to be nothing but bones. So I asked the steward to bring a fat calf to butcher instead. Well, the calf he brought ran right up to me and rubbed his head on my legs and lowed so sweetly, for of course this calf was my son, though I knew it not. Again, I could not sacrifice a sweet calf, so I called for another. And again, my wife protested. But this time, I insisted we would not kill this calf. The next day, my steward whispered that he needed to speak to me in private. He told me that when he brought the calf back to trade it for another, his daughter had cried with joy. You see, she also knew magic and she could tell that the calf was my own beloved son. I offered this girl any amount of riches if she could only use her magic to break the spell on my son, but she asked only to marry him. So she sprinkled him with magic water, and my son returned to full human health. And they did marry. We were all so happy. Except my first wife. But my new daughter-in-law sprinkled her with magic water too and turned her into this gazelle. A beautiful gazelle, the old sheik said sadly, so I will always keep an eye on her. I do still love her after everything. Well there now, is my tale not fabulous? The genie nodded. It is. I will grant you one third of the life of this merchant. But what about the merchant, Shariar said? What good does it do if the sheik can spare one third of his life? The genie will still kill him with the other two thirds. Dinarzad said, I bet Shahrazad can tell us the rest of the story tomorrow night. If the sultan lets me live that long, she replied. Well, the sultan really wanted to know what happened to the merchant. So he let Shahrazad live one more day, and the next night she continued. The second old sheik said, 
grant me one third of the merchant's life if you find my tale even more amazing than the one you just heard. The genie agreed, and the second old sheik began. These dogs, he said, are my brothers. I was the responsible one, you see. They kept squandering their parts of the inheritance, and I kept bailing them out because I love them. Once, they convinced me that we should all be merchant sailors and travel the seas. I went along. One day, we landed on a beach and this woman ran up to me, rather pretty, but dressed in rags. She begged me, please take me as your wife. I will make a good wife for you. Who was this person, obviously penniless, with no one to recommend her? Who was she to so boldly ask to marry me? But I knew not to judge by appearances. I knew it was her heart that mattered, and when I looked into her heart, I saw that it was true. So I took her as my wife, and she joined our sailing voyage, and we were happy together, wonderfully happy. So happy that my brothers were filled with poisonous envy. Why should I have a wonderful wife appear to keep me company? And they had none. So one night, on our voyage, my brothers crept up to us while we slept, and threw us both overboard. I surely would have drowned, but my wife transformed. It turned out she was a fairy. She flew us both to a nearby island and explained. She had been watching me and fallen in love, so she disguised herself as a poor beggar woman, knowing if I accepted her in that form, then I truly had a good heart, and she really would live with me as my wife for the rest of my life. But now she was too angry at my brothers and wanted to kill them. No, I protested, we must be kind even to those who've done us wrong. Well, she thought long and hard about this. Then she flew me into my old home where I set about setting up my old shop again. When I finished my day's work, I returned to find these two dogs waiting for me, whining pitifully at my door. My wife appeared and whispered, These are your brothers. Their punishment now is to remain as dogs for ten years. Ten years from now, come find me, and I will lift this curse. It has been ten years, the second sheik concluded. And now we are off to find my wife. And that is my tale. Is it not even more marvelous? Uh, the genie said, I will grant you one third of this merchant's. Oh, Shariar was excited now. Obviously, the merchant would be spared if the last she could tell the genie an even more fabulous story. If the first two sheik's stories were so fabulous, what would the last sheik's story be like? So, he didn't have Scheherazade executed the next morning either. So, that that night, she could continue the tale. Well... The third sheik told a tale so fabulous that no one has ever been able to do it justice enough to write it down. So the genie granted him the last third of the merchant's life, and the three old sheiks, of course, let the merchant live. Oh, but this tale is nothing compared to the story of the fisherman and the trouble he caught in his nets. Oh, tell it, tell it, Dinazard cried. And before Shah Rayar could protest, Scheherazade started a brand new story. Every night she told stories, leaving off just when Shahrayar was aching to know what happened next. And every morning, he let her live another day so he could hear the rest of the story that night. She told funny stories, scary stories, stories of romance, and stories of family. She told stories of fantastic creatures like rocks and giants and fish the size of islands magic carpets and mechanical flying horses, of jinn and sorcerers and other magic folk, both good and bad. She told stories of people you might recognize, like Alvin and Alibaba and Sinbad the Sailor, kings and beggars and serving girls. Yes, 
she made sure to tell lots of stories of smart, brave, good and true women to remind the Sultan that they were people too. After 1001 nights of storytelling, Shah Rayar made clear to Shahrazad in no uncertain terms that she need never, ever worry again that he could even imagine having her executed because he had fallen truly and deeply in love with her. But more than that, he had learned from her stories. He learned the importance of mercy as well as justice. He learned how to put himself in the shoes of people different from him. Poor, powerless people, women, people from different lands, even animals. He learned to feel empathy for others. He learned how to admit mistakes, apologize, and make things right. He learned how to trust, how to forgive, and how to grow into a better person. And he had. Through Shahrazad's stories, he had grown into a truly good man that she too could fall in love with in return. And together, they ruled the empire in peace and generosity for the rest of their many, many days. That is the power of stories. Through sharing stories, we learn to connect with others all around the world. We learn how to understand, to love, and to grow. Shahrazad wants to remind us all, everyone on Earth, including the people in the International Space Station just above Earth, has a story. Will you stop and listen?